All right, what's up? What's up? My name is Vinny Anand. Um, I am a founding partner in Ala Fresca. We are a commercial production company founded and led by POC Creatives. Uh, and my partner Ronald is on as well. And we're here today because, you know, Maurice Malone is a, uh, he's someone we look up to. Um, he's someone that's been pioneering uh, POC creatives in the fashion, in the commercial spaces for so long now. And so we were so honored to be able to make a uh, digital campaign uh, for Maurice and his brand, uh, Williamsburg Garment, uh, also Maurice Malone Jeans. Uh, we made a brand video that was about four to five minutes. That's a sort of docu-series, docu-series style interview of Mo and one of his protégés, Carlisle. And then we also did a photo campaign showcasing Mo and Carlisle in their workshop, as well as um, different street shots to kind of tie in the fact that Mo is a streetwear designer that went to uh, Runway, which is, I mean, unprecedented in general, but being a black designer to do that, you know, in the 60s and 70s, and, and then for his stuff to be popping in the 90s, and him, you know, Biggie, uh, Tupac, you name it, Aaliyah was wearing Maurice Malone jeans, and, and now he's he's coming into his third act, and so we're just helping him to uh, get, get the message out and, and spread the love. Uh, you know, and that, that kind of ties into uh, me and Ron. Um, as you can see, uh, I talk a lot. Ron says enough, just enough. Well, I mean, I guess I guess we could speak on to how we sort of stumbled uh, onto Maurice's project. Um, we'll probably get into this a little later about our D and I program, but essentially, we take kids from the neighborhoods and we bring them on commercial sets. And one of these kids just happened to mention that he was uh, apprenticing under Maurice, which blew my mind because I was like, wait a minute, Maurice Malone, like the Maurice Malone. So we got to talking and then Vinny and I got to, you know, brainstorming of how we would get to meet him and maybe try to collab with him. And we sort of hatched a plan and just went into his office and, and presented it. And Mo being Mo just sort of, latched onto it and understood that uh, as young creatives, us being young creatives, um, we could bring something different uh, to him and represent him in a different light. And he really dug that. So it was sort of a, it's sort of like meeting one of your idols, you know, it was incredible for us, but also to be able to contribute to his legacy. Uh, it was super cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just to piggyback on what Ron's saying, I think that the thing that you learn early on, so first of all, uh, you know, we both came from non entertainment backgrounds. Um, you know, I, I was uh, a real estate investment uh, guy in my early twenties. Ron was a, a mechanical engineer uh, and we both kind of quit those paths. Uh, well, I lost my shirt and I had to quit because I was basically half a million dollars in debt at the age of 22. Um, but, you know, um, and Ron was a mechanical, mechanical engineer and he quit that to do this. No idea why he did that. Um, and so, um, so when we came in, we had a different perspective. And, and you know, I, I think early on what happens is it's essential to, like, find collaborators to tell your stories. I mean, that, that's just how you learn how to, how to tell stories. Um, but, but what you learn as you go further on is that, sometimes you jump into partnerships and collaborations and you can do it in a creative way and that's cool and you see what happens and those are always beneficial but then sometimes you do it and you make it legal and and you sort of sign paperwork and you start a company because you think that this is a way and what we learned is that when you really uh will take that step you better make sure that you are going into business with someone who has a skill set that you don't. And I think it's so important, like more and more I, I think about that, like if me and Ron were both like me or if me and Ron were both like him, I'm not saying that it couldn't work. It, would, it wouldn't be as, um, it wouldn't be as really like seamless. But because we have uh, different skill sets, you know, they talk about this a lot, how, uh, and we're like co-directors, we're a directing duo, we're a creative duo. Uh, okay, and 
usually someone will say, okay, well, who's the ideas guy and who's the technical guy? And I'm the ideas guy and Ron's the technical guy. Doesn't mean we don't do, we do a crossover, but I think it's really important starting out to find partners that bring something to the table that you naturally don't have. And it doesn't mean you can't get better at, but I, I do think that it's a long game. And as things, as things persist, the attrition rate gets higher, right? It gets harder to keep people on board. And it's so important to have partners who you connect with on, in my opinion, a spiritual level, because I promise you, there are going to be times when you're like, I don't know, any 99% of the people are going to quit. Nine, I promise you. And it's that 1% that's going to get to the other side. And that 1% that gets to the other side, man, it's like luck, it's God, it's, it's, it's everything. It's favors, it's people like Mark, people like Maurice, but... I will say that, you know, find a partnership that is symbiotic in order to build an organism that has multi channels and perspectives. That, if that makes sense, it's, 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 don't just jump into the first partnership that you come across. Creatively, yes, yes, jump into it. And find, but when it comes to like making things legal and official, if I could give you all one piece of advice, it's like, just that, like, take it easy, take it slow. Uh, creatively, hey man, spread your wings and fly. But when it comes to making a business, it's those are two separate things that have to coexist. So, I, I think what's beautiful about Vinny and I's collaboration is that we, from the jump, we were we saw eye to eye on the importance of exposure and without it, you know, you're, you're, you're a dead duck, right? There are so many people in this world who have access to parts of the world and industries um, that people of color don't have. And I remember even sort of in my engineering days, like, you know, there were these, my cohorts whose parents had access to these companies. So they had these internships that I didn't have. And you know, if you don't have those internships, you don't get the, that that beautiful job at the end of your four years. Um, so transitioning to this creative industry and recognizing, wow, we really don't have any inroads. As soon as we got in the door, it was important for us to look back and be like, all right, who can we help get in here? Because if you don't know what a C-stand is, if you don't know what a production budget looks like, you know, there there are a lot of things, uh, obviously a lot of things you can research and find out, but there, there are so many nuances on how to act on set and all these things you, that you won't know unless you're there. And if you don't know and you're there, you're going to stick out. So it's about being able to provide these lessons and this exposure to a generally marginalized group of people. That was, that was really for, for us because even when we got on set, we would be looked at as if we didn't know what we were doing. And we're the boss, you know? So uh, that, that that's really, for uh, for me at least, and I, I know Brittany as well, providing exposure uh, is so critical. Because you could even not want to be in the industry, but guess what? You were able to find out. And a lot of kids look, go through life like, man, what if, I wish, and it's like, no, let's help you clarify this. Get on set. You like it? Great. You don't? Even better. Um, and I think we don't get to have these kinds of choices and make these decisions for ourselves. A lot of times we are told what to do or sort of forced into what to do. And I think the, the, the liberation is being able to choose. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I when we first kind of aligned me and Ron and, and said, okay, we we need to start telling our stories. Um, you know, that like everything was in service of that. And the more I think about what that meant, it, it's like we wanted to tell stories that could flip perspectives upside down. You know, and those perspectives, whether it's a Haitian horror that makes you have a completely different view of voodoo 
than you do now, whether it's a um, TV series about a, a, a South Asian first gen Indian kid that is forced to run his parents' hotel in the hood and makes you see uh, the hood and the relationship with uh, immigrant families uh, inside of those places. Uh, it makes you completely change your position on, on how you view them. Like we've all, that was our mission. And like, it's kind of cool that like all these years later, like that's, that, that pervades everything we're doing, whether that's, um, you know, from the commercial angle. Um, I mean, obviously there are things that we just produce. We just get brought, brought on to produce and, and we're there more of like, you know, on the ground line producers. But then in terms of like, there's a lot of commercial clients who we are kind of the creative agency for and we're like helping them tell their story because we're, we're storytellers, we're writers, directors, uh, actors. Um, and, and then the narrative stuff, which is our, our heart. Um, we, we have a short film that we just put out called 14 Years. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a contemporary Western piece about a South Asian musician who's going to, who's basically going to commit suicide and gets rescued by his neighbor. It's a very New York uh, centric story, you know, but two South Asian protagonist characters and uh, actors. And it was directed by Ron, right? It's not traditional. It's not completely the way you would think it would be. So yeah, that, that's our mission. And, and I think we're always going to be trying to re refine what that is and always trying to make it simpler and clearer. Uh, but for right now, yeah, I think underserved perspectives that make you flip your perspective upside down, something like that. I don't know. 